Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the macroverse. Today, we're going to talk about the United States Treasury yield curve and the implications of its inversion on a future recession. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. I will say I am feeling a bit under the weather, so please excuse if I, if I end up coughing or anything like that. I do want to get this video out regardless uh, so that we can you know, better understand sort of the implications of, of it on the current market conditions. So this is the yield curve. And if you're unfamiliar with it, I have done prior videos on it where I go a bit more in depth. But generally speaking, it would be reasonable to assume that longer time frame treasuries should have higher yields. So if you were to say, put your money into something for a year, you might expect a certain interest rate, right? You might expect to get back a certain yield. If you put it in for two years, you would expect more annually because you're, you're saying, you know what, I'm going to put my money with, into this treasury over here for a longer period of time. So you would expect to get more on an annualized basis. But sometimes that's not actually true, like what we're seeing right now. You may notice that the yield on, say, the six-month the one year, the two year, and the three year is higher than some of these longer term yields. For instance, the two year yield is currently sitting at around 4.43%, but the 10 year yield is sitting at 4.01%. So annually, you know, per, you know, every single year, if you, were, if you were to annualize these returns, you'd actually be getting more by putting it into a shorter time frame treasury. Now, this is not how it normally looks. And in order to understand how it normally looks in, say, standard economic times, we need to roll back the clock. That's what we're going to do. If we roll back the clock, this is what the Treasury, this is what the Treasury yield curve looked like back in late 2021. This is what it looked like in, in 2020. It seems fairly normal, right? Like the longer time frame treasuries have higher yields. That makes sense. What does this mean, though? Why would it look like this? Well, what we could do is we could go to prior times that it has looked like this. One of the most recent times is actually preceding the 2020 recession. If you were to go to, say, 2019, you can see that the yield curve inverted on some of these time frames, right? Some of the shorter time frames gave higher yields than some of the longer term time frames. What did that mean? It meant we were heading for a recession, and the recession came in 2020. Now, the Federal Reserve and governments and, and, and central banks around the world, of course, printed our way out of it. Okay, so we kicked the can down the road. We said, we're not going to deal with our problems in 2020. We'll deal with it sometime later. Welcome to 2022, right? We're dealing with these problems now. The Federal Reserve arguably made policy mistakes last year when they didn't start raising interest rates when they should have, and now we're paying the consequences. I, I don't, I don't think that they're making a policy mistake right now. I think we're just sort of living with the consequences of the last policy mistake they made. Their mandate is to get inflation, you know, to their target of two percent. That's their mandate, and and to keep unemployment down. They simply are forced to raise interest rates, despite the fact the economy is slowing down. And this is causing these, uh, you know, these treasuries, the, the, the yields to, to go up a lot. And in some cases, some of these shorter time frames have actually gone up higher than some of the longer term ones. If you go back to, say, the sort of the decade between the financial crisis and the 2020 recession, the yield curve looked pretty normal. I mean, this was a long period where the yield curve looked fairly normal. We also know that from the financial crisis until, you know, the the around 2020 or so, the market was pretty good. I mean, it, it mostly just went up. Not, I mean, not monotonically, of course, but it mostly just went up. But if you go back before the financial crisis, you can see the yield curve also inverted. And what did it mean? It meant a recession was coming. Again, before the, before the recession in 2001, the yield curve inverted. You can see here it's inverted in the year 2000. What did it mean? It meant the recession was coming. One way to look at this is to actually take the spread, to look at the spread between, between various time frames. Okay? So 
I think two of the most popular ones are the spread on the two year and the 10 year and the three month on the 10 year. Now, before I get too much further into this conversation, I want to mention a, a couple of, say, academic points. All right. So number one is that there is, of course, from an academic perspective, one could easily argue that because we've had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, uh, that we're already in a recession. All right. If you go to the chart, it's convenient. We have it right here, right? Two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. If we look at the quarterly change, normally it corresponds to a recession, which is the gray region, right? Normally when you see this go below zero like this and we have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, it means we're in a recession. We're not in a recession this time. Is it all political? I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it has nothing to do with that. But the other thing to look at is that normally when you get two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, you also see unemployment going up. And you will notice that we have recessions when the unemployment rate starts to go up. But it hasn't started going up right now, right? And in fact, it's back to historic lows for this business cycle. So it kind of makes sense from some perspectives and from for some economists to say that we're not in a recession yet because the unemployment rate is still low and we're still experiencing fairly tight labor market conditions. This is also likely contributing to soaring inflation, right? The Federal Reserve has made it fairly clear that we will likely see the unemployment rate going up sometime soon. Okay, so my guess, if I were to speculate dubiously, in fact, again, that's the that's the only way it really well, the only way I really know how to speculate is I would speculate that a, a recession will be declared in 2023. It might not be declared at the beginning of 2023. Maybe it'll be declared in the middle of 2023 and they'll backdate it to the beginning of 2023. I don't think they're going to backdate it to early 2022, despite, you know, maybe you wanting them to do that. I don't think they're going to do that. But they probably will say that we're in a recession once they start to see the unemployment rate go up. Now, what does that mean for this? Okay. If you look at the spread on the two year and the 10 year. Okay. So going back to the treasury yield curve. Or sorry, let me go back to the, um, to the yield curve. You can see the two-year get, is that gets you a higher yield annually than the 10-year. If you look at the spread on this, this is not a normal thing. Remember, normally it looks like this. If you look at the spread, if you look at this zero right here, when it goes below zero, it's a fairly decent predictor of a recession. Why is that important, right? Why, why is it so important that it's a good predictor of a recession? Well, one thing to remember, and I'm going to pull this chart up so we can see, see all these recessions. The stock market usually bottoms during the recession, okay? So all the gray shaded regions, if you look at all of them, you'll notice that in every single one, uh, or at least most of them, the stock market is seeing some type of, of local bottom or major bottom in each of these recessions with the exception of of. The, the, the dot com crash from 2000 to 2002. We know what happened September 11th, 2001, and um, you know that led to to I, I I would I would imagine some spooked market participants, and and we we eventually actually went lower than where we went during that during the recession. I mean we had two fairly convincing bottoms, but we actually did get you know another lower low or so down here. So that's why it's important. You look at the spread on the two year and the 10 year, when it when it flips, when it inverts, when the two year goes above the 10 year, it normally means we're heading into a recession. Now there have been some sort of false signals, right? Where it sort of goes below it and we didn't really get a recession. But usually when you go really deep into it, like we are right now, it's a fairly good predictor of an upcoming recession. A lot of economists <coughs> prefer the three month and the 10 year. This is a pretty good predictor of an upcoming recession as well. You can see that we had a, a an inversion of the three month and the 10 year over here in 2000, and it was fairly good at, at calling this recession. Again, we had one in 07 and 06, and it was pretty good at calling this recession. <coughs> it also happened over here in 2019. We had the, the short recession in 2020. And then it's actually just now inverted again. Now, I will be quick to point out that it can also flash inversion 
and not necessarily mean anything if it's not sustained for a while, okay? So we need to be cognizant of that. It could just pop right back up and, um, and um, <coughs> you know, not invert, right? You know, uninvert for a while longer. So we need to be aware that that easily could happen. Uh, what I'm looking for more so on the three month and the 10 year is once it gets pretty far down, like you see it, like you saw in 2000, 2007 and 2019, we normally see a, a recession not long after. The reason why that's important, again, as I said before, that's normally where the stock market bottoms. This is how it all comes back. And if you only follow me for the crypto stuff, which is what the channel is mainly about, right? If you only follow me for that, I mean, this affects crypto as well, because if we're in a recession, people are just less likely to buy risk assets. I imagine crypto also could easily bottom during the recession, okay? So these are all important things that you should consider, especially a lot of the altcoins. They can, you know, they can really get hammered when, when times are tough. Um, <coughs> I mean, it's just the way it works, right? When, when people are worried about, about uh, you know, about just their, their day-to-day spending and uh, when they don't have as much discretionary spending, they're likely not going out and buying altcoins. I mean, that's usually the last thing on their mind. So that's something important to consider when you navigate the crypto versus having an understanding of the macro verse as well. So yes, the three month has inverted the 10 year, but we could easily see it uninvert re relatively quickly. Uh, and, and then it can still take a little bit of time for it to really go down. What I'm looking for is, is to see it, you know, invert by a significant margin, not just like a, a, a very slight inversion. Um, and, you know, at, at that point, it, you know, if and when that occurs, then we're likely looking at an immediate recession it, or, or like a, a recession in the not so distant future, which would then help us figure out, you know, what is a, a likely bottom in the S&P 500. But that's mostly what I want to talk about. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there. Hopefully this is useful. If you guys like the content, please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. And we also do have all these charts on the website as well as a lot of cryptocurrency charts as well. So make sure you check it out into the cryptoverse.com. We'll wrap it up there. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.